Kia ora and good morning and welcome to Sacred Heart Church Ponsonby in Auckland where we are going to celebrate the great Feast of the Epiphany. Our celebrant this morning is Bishop Michael Geelan, the Assistant Bishop of Auckland. Would you please stand for the opening hymn. Tomatoa o te tamaiti o te wairua tapu. Amen. Kia noho te ariki, kia koutou. The Lord be with you. And I too join with Father Rory in wishing you all a happy new year, a blessed year, as we celebrate today this appropriate feast of these three foreign travellers who come to worship Jesus. To prepare us to enter into these sacred mysteries, we are aware of our need for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the sorrowful of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine out Jerusalem, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising on you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples, Above you the Lord now rises, and above you his glory appears. The nations come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Lift up your eyes and look around. 
all are assembling and coming towards you, your sons from far away and daughters being tenderly carried. At this sight, you will grow radiant, your heart throbbing and full. Since the riches of the sea will flow to you, the wealth of the nations come to you. Camels in throngs will cover you, and dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. Everyone in Sheba will come, bringing gold and incense, and singing the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You have probably heard how I have been entrusted by God with the grace he meant for you, and that it was by a revelation that I was given the knowledge of this mystery. The mystery that has now been revealed through the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets was unknown to any men in past generations. It means that pagans now share the same inheritance, that they are parts of the same body, and that the same promise has been made to them in Christ Jesus through the gospel. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. After Jesus had been born at Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod, some wise men came to Jerusalem from the east. Where is the infant king of the Jews? they asked. We saw his star as it rose, and have come here to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was perturbed, and so were the whole of Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, and inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. At Bethlehem in Judea, they told him, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, for out of you will come a leader who will be shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men to see him privately. He asked them the exact date on which the star had appeared and sent them on to Bethlehem. Go and find out all you can about the child, he said, and when you have found him, let me know so that I may go and do him homage. Having listened to what the king had to say, they set out. And there in front of them was the star that they had seen rising. It went forward and halted over the place where the child was. The sight of the star filled them with delight. And going into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And falling on their knees, they did him homage. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him 
gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. But they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod and return to their own country by a different way. The Gospel of the Lord. As we set out on another year, having just lived a very interesting year, 2021, a very uncertain and troubled year, we look ahead and things don't look too different. We can look no further than these three kings, these three priests of astrology, who also set out on a journey, on a year, where they did not know the destination. They did not have a map. There were many challenges that awaited them, and yet they followed the yearning of their hearts. They allowed the light of God to guide them to his son, Jesus. They are our example for the beginning of this, the year of the Lord, 2022. They were led by a question. Where is the infant king of the Jews? And they allowed that question to be their map, to guide them and to bring them to fulfilment before our Saviour Jesus Christ. The Feast of Epiphany is our feast. We heard in the second letter of, from St. Paul to the Ephesians that God has opened his story of salvation to the pagans. He has gone beyond just the Israelites, the chosen people, to all nations and to all peoples, and that includes us. We are the forebears, we are the whakapapa, the ancestors of the three kings. And so we ask, how can we this year allow their example and their guidance to lead us in our faith? Just the other day, I went and visited a, a family who were uh, suffering greatly. One of the other challenges that 2021 had brought and it had brought to their family. But what I noticed about them was there was a joy and a peace in their family that I had not seen for a long time. And as I spent time in the, in the family and as I got to know them better, I saw that they were a people who were led by a question. What does God want of me now? Where is God calling me? Where is God guiding me? And they spoke of this question, guiding their entire family and everything they did. The mother spoke to me of her husband coming home and saying, I really feel God's calling me to leave our business, to sell our business, and for me to go into another form of uh, vocation that will bring in less money and will more, more, bring more challenges. And she said, I said, but this is too difficult. We've got a family to provide for. And he said, God's guiding me. And he said, the next day, 
a priest come and visited them and said, I was praying yesterday and God shied in my heart that you're about to make a decision that's a good decision, make it. She said, I didn't need those words at that time. But we made it. And it has brought us great joy to really seek God's guidance in our lives, to really live as he's called us to live. And isn't that the story of all disciples? For us to set aside our plans, to set aside our comfort, and to step out on God's adventure. This family that I speak of, that I visited the other day, reminded me of that adventure of faith. There are three lessons that the Magi give us. Three lessons that will help us on our journey this year in 2022. Help us to rejoice no matter what comes, to set our plans aside. The first of those is to do just that. To say to God, guide my heart to Jesus. To ask the question, where is the infant king of the Jews? Where is the Messiah in this year, 2022? I want to follow him wherever he guides me, wherever he leads me. To have the courage to say that. To allow the safety of position, to set aside our own plans, and to allow God to guide us. To say Mary's yes. Abraham and Sarah's yes. Moses's yes. The first disciples, yes. Mary Horhepa's Yes, that family I spoke of, to say yes, whatever you're asking me, God, I want to do. Second, to follow the light. To search diligently. To allow God to speak through your prayer, to search for him every day. To seek his guidance and to listen to others as they speak to you. You'll notice God Gently guiding you. And this again, this mother was speaking to a young uh, group of people I was with, and they were asking her how they should let God guide their life. And she said that, ask him. Ask him, show me every day where you want me to go, what you want me to do, how you want me to be your hands, your feet, your side. And lastly, bring everything you have, you have your gold, your frankincense, your myrrh. If we truly want to be disciples of Jesus Christ, if we truly want to meet him this year, we have to make sacrifices. Who's feeling nervous? <laughs> Who's holding on to their house keys? <laughs> I know I am. But it takes that, doesn't it? It takes us saying yes. I read recently of a retreat that was had where the director said, if we truly are to follow God's will, we need to give beyond our means so that God can fill us, fill our emptiness. When we are full, he can't fill us. And so to be generous this year, be extra generous this year in every way, and then God will break through. You will meet Jesus in a new way. His light will shine more brightly, and not just on you, but through you and for others. You see, this is the secret about today. We are all seekers. We are all magi. You wouldn't be watching this today, or sitting here today, or hearing this today, if you weren't seeking if God wasn't drawing you, you want the adventure of faith. You want to meet the Messiah, Jesus, and he is calling you. But we need to set aside our plans, set aside our comfort, 
and set aside what we own, our possessions and our wealth, and give it all to Jesus. And when we do that, he will transform it into something beautiful, something we didn't expect, but much more, much more than we could ever have hoped for. I pray that 2022 will be an adventure for you and that you will come to meet Jesus in a new way and that he will shine his light for you so others too can see what a joy it is, what a freedom it is to know him as our saviour. So for the first time this year, let us stand together and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in God, Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father, born of the Father, born of the God, born of the God, God has revealed his Son to us as the light of the world. Let us pray to the Lord in the light given to us by his Son for the needs of the church and the world. For the church of God, that she may reveal ever more fully God's abiding, abiding love for everyone by drawing closer to the person of Christ. Lord, hear us. We make our prayer with Mary, who showed a son to the wise men. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In the presence of Christ, we make our personal petitions in silence. Loving God, you revealed your love for us in the person of your Son. May we, through our closeness to him, reveal your love to everyone. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favour, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this a memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh, glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe more distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord, the kingdom of God and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Kia e noi tātou, let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kia noho te ariki, kia koutou, the Lord be with you. Amen. Kia whakapai ngā koutou e te atua, kaharawa, e te matua, e te mtumaiti, e te wairua tapu. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.